morning, everyone. It's good to be here and worship with you again in our third Sunday of Sheltering in Place Virtual Bloom in the Desert Ministries UCC Sunday Morning Worship. I hope, well, I don't, I hope, I know, I will find out. Uh, the old adage is third time's the charm. So uh, we'll see how uh, we do today. We know that colleagues and other churches and friends of ours um, all around the world are doing virtual worship instead of in-person worship and all of us are finding new ways to do things and uh, learning and trying to and, and adjusting and getting a little bit more comfortable a little bit more casual a little bit more uh, relaxed in these kinds of a situation I'm very glad today to have with us uh, Ken Forney as our pianist and music director of Bloom today and uh, also very glad to have Kathy Humphrey as um, our, one of our readers, as well as providing musical support, and Mike Shear as well uh, in the same way as reading and providing musical support. And of course, we're grateful for uh, Hugo and Lauren uh, behind the scenes there, uh, making sure we're coming through to you all right. I am uh, welcoming you to Bloom even as we are in this place and not assembled as a group, our congregation continues to be committed to the modern motto of the United Church of Christ, which says, whoever you are and wherever you are on the journey of faith, you are welcome here. And so we are a congregation that strives to express ourselves in ways that are true to ourselves, understanding that God's creation is um, great and diverse and broad, and we do our very best to be as inclusive and welcoming in the midst of all of that great diversity as we can. We know that we come from a wide variety of backgrounds and geographical locations, especially now, and uh, perspectives and understandings. We are liberals and uh, conservatives and, and independents that gather uh, together uh, for worship. We are people who are um, of various economic backgrounds, educational backgrounds, and we know that people are straight and gay and bisexual, and, and we know that people are transgender and cisgender and, and, and non-gender declaring. All of this diversity is such that we want to connect with people in ways as you see yourself from the inside out rather than an identity we would foist upon you. It is um, good to be here today. One of the things that we did earlier uh, uh, Mike and I sat, and perhaps some other Bloom folks did, and we, we connected to uh, First Congregational, First Central Congregational UCC in Omaha, Nebraska today, where our Bloom members, uh, Debbie Loratoni and Sarah Loratoni, along with David Loratoni and, and um, um, Laurent Kino and uh, Cole Kino, all celebrated the baptism of Lucille Elizabeth Kino. Uh, and uh, it was great for us to be there. Bloom was present in the form of a lovely vase of, you guessed it, sunflowers and baby's breath. Um, and uh, we, were, we were grateful to be there and to have their pastor, uh, Reverend Dr. Scott Jones, uh, acknowledge Bloom's presence in that way in the service. Um, it was a very special blessing at that time. I have an announcement that I wanted to, here it is that I wanna be sure and share with you. And you can also see in the comments or in the, Hugo, it's in the screen there, or that people can see uh, the fact that as of today, we have available for, uh, for donations, uh, the ability to text a donation to Bloom in the Desert Ministries. Uh, there is in the screen a private 800 number that is for Bloom only. And you can text to that and then simply put a dollar sign and the dollar amount following that and send that. The first time you do it, you will be asked to fill out a form that gives your uh, you know, credit card information. But then from then on, it will always be automatic and you will receive a confirmation thank you as a result. So you can take note of that and that's something you can do anytime during the service. Um, you can also note that today we are going to try something new and that is a virtual hospitality time. And we'll be using the software that's called Zoom meeting software, Zoom, Z-O-O-M. 
that is available and we have put the um, we have put the oops I'm supposed to silence my cell phone there uh, we have put the uh, uh, location for that in that frame as well and there is because this is a public uh, format through Facebook there is in this case a password and you'll see the numbers there for that password um, that's going to start about as soon after 11 11 10 uh, I'll open that up as soon as we are ready following worship and uh, we can gather in that way this is new we've never done it this way before it may go flawlessly it may be goofed up somehow we'll get from this time to the future and we'll figure these things out as we go along that's our motto you know we go with who we got and do the best we can one of our mottos yeah. uh, it's not our only motto <laughs> that's not our only motto i um have noted the texting and the zoom meeting and so that concludes our announcements for today we are scattered but yet and some of us are gathered uh, here in this place we're all gathered as we are connected through this facebook live time or the recording that follows on youtube afterwards uh, let us bring together as people have done for many years in other ways and now in this way our hearts and soul and mind and strength for the worship of god and caring for one another. Uh, we will receive this music of centering uh, that our music director, Ken Forney, will provide, and then we will proceed in our worship with Kathy Humphrey as our liturgist. Good morning. Good morning. Sisters and brothers, we are gathered together in a new way to celebrate the presence of the divine wisdom. God made us in his image, the image of goodness and truth, a reflection of our creator. We gather, we gather virtually to sustain, sustain our beloved community. community. We, we find, find common ground with friends. friends. We, we sense, sense in our souls truth and healing. healing. We recognize that we are called to bless one another with grace. We call ourselves to use this gathering for renewal and growth. Shalom, salam, ping on, pause, peace, amen.
now sing our opening hymn, What Gift Can We Bring? to ministry. Please join me in saying our prayer for good and growth, a prayer for pandemic. May, May we, we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home Remember those who must choose between preserving their own health or making rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close, remember those who have no options. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Loving Creator, Wonderful Counselor, Receive now our silent prayers. To all our silent prayers, let the people say, Amen. Amen. God's grace energizes us with freedom to create a new world that is loved, blessed, and empowered. Amen. Amen. Let, let us now, now receive, receive the word. scripture reading today is as follows. 
Out of the depths I cry to you, Yahweh. God, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice, my cries for mercy. If you kept track of our sins, Yahweh, who could stand before you? But with you is forgiveness, and for this we revere you. So I wait for you, Yahweh. My soul waits. And in your work I place my trust. My song longs for you, Yahweh, more than sentinels long for the dawn, more than sentinels long for the dawn. Israel, put your hope in Yahweh, for with Yahweh is abundant love and the fullness of deliverance. God will deliver Israel from all its failings. Here is the Hebrew scripture reading. Today's gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 17 through 27. When Jesus arrived in Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Since Bethany was only about two miles from Jerusalem, many people had come out to console Martha and Mary about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, while Mary stayed at home with the mourners. When she got to Jesus, Martha said, If you had been here, my brother would never have died. Yet even now, I am sure that God will give you whatever you ask. Your brother will rise again, Jesus assured her. Martha replied, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me will live, even if they die. And those who are alive and believe in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Martha replied. I have come to believe that you are the Messiah. God's only begotten, the one who is coming into the world. Here ends the reading of the gospel. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. couple of details uh, before I get started. Exactly, it, it is uh, uh, noted, I just wanted to note, the psalm that Mike was reading is Psalm 130, which is a wonderful prayer in, in its whole. He read the entire, read the whole psalm, and it is uh, a, a, a wonderful resource for prayers at times when we uh, can feel some difficulty in our lives. And you know, even today, I would, uh, you know, if, if it were up to me, we could change the uh, last phrases to, um, you know, um, all of earth, put your hope in Yahweh, for with Yahweh is abundant love and the fullness of deliverance. God will deliver all of earth from all its failings. And that's a meaningful um, sense of prayer that we can share together. I would also note a couple of the details I thought that, you know, are interesting if we just want to remember uh, how things function in the Bible. In the one case, um, Lazarus, in the, in the Gospel reading, Lazarus is in the tomb for four days. And folks who are connected with us in Bloom through Bible Bites will know that numbers mean something. And if you want to pick up on the fact that there's four days, let's know that that's one more than three. And this is written later. Jesus was in the, in the tomb for three days. Many things happen in three days in the Bible. It's a common term for a short period of time. What was unusual here is the four days, and that showed how Lazarus, uh, it, this story is Im important. It's not the same as resurrection on Easter, but it is important, and the four days was important as a delineator. The other thing I just thought about, it just struck me there, that uh, 
Bethany is two miles from Jerusalem, uh, and, and Mike and I have been doing two-mile walks uh, of two or three or three times a week so far. Um, and so now we know what a two-mile walk is, and uh, just just think that folks uh, walked in Palm Springs, the equivalent of El Cielo to uh, Indian Canyon, um, or uh, from Sunrise down to um, uh, Gene Autry. And uh, those would be the references that we could have with how far the folks walked in order to go and be there in this time of grief and recovery, and then subsequently as audience for this miracle that we are given. There are ways in which our scriptures are relating to our everyday life, and uh, I think it's important for us to connect in those ways as well as in the spiritual, uh, you know, the spiritual and, and, and sense of devotion in those realms as well. Let's pray. We are thankful how you bless us, God, uh, in, in this way. Uh, because you are omnipresent, uh, that, that word some of us learned in confirmation class, we know that you are everywhere. And so as we are joined in this way through the internet, we know that we are always joined in spirit with you and with one another. Uh, we may feel separated. Hopefully, we will not feel isolated from one another. We continue to grow and love one another as a congregation and as people in general and in our families and communities. We pray that we will discover even more ways to do that in the days to come as we are responding to this natural disaster that is happening uh, in the form of an invisible um, virus. We pray, loving God, that you will continue to guide us to receive the words of encouragement that we can have for one another, and that in the midst of this time, the words of my mouth, as well as the meditations of our hearts, are faithful to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. So coming so close to Easter, uh, the raising of Lazarus from being dead is more than a miracle story. From the position it often takes in the Christian calendar, uh, in the Christian story, the liturgical calendar around the year, that from the position this story often takes, uh, is, 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 um, uh, it foreshadows Easter, the raising of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus foreshadows Easter, the resurrection to come. Given that this is a story that is often told without much other reference, I sometimes wonder how many people know that this is not the only up from the grave he arose story in our Bible. It's not even the first resurrection by Jesus story in the Gospels. Lazarus was Jesus' third body raising uh, in his ministry up to this time. At least 10 other Bible characters were raised from the dead. And that 10, I'm not going to list them all, and that 10 does not include all of the other reports of people walking from their graves and out of their tombs at various times in our scripture stories, including at the moment Jesus reportedly died on Golgotha. Since this is our story today, Let's just stay with this one. This is the last Sunday in Lent before we get to the events of Holy Week. Next week is Palm Sunday. In our traditional Christian heritage, Holy Week sees Jesus enter Jerusalem on one Sunday and rise from the dead on the next. That's a lot to process. But it's the heritage we have and we can work with it for good. Today's story is one typically used on the Sunday before Palm Sunday, and in it, a man who is said to be close to Jesus dies. The family summons Jesus, who is their celebrity friend, and when he arrives, a woman named Martha, who you might remember as the bossy one in the Mary and Mar of the Mary and Martha sisters, Martha berates Jesus for being late. If you had been here earlier, she says, he would not be dead. Jesus calms her down and raises her hopes 
based on the spiritual heritage they share. Jesus regains Martha's trust, and we know the rest of the story. Lazarus comes out of his tomb, that is, not the closet. Although, well, the small, we don't know, but I'm pretty confident this is meant about only the tomb. The small section of Bible story that we, we have today is more important, I think, than the ending with Lazarus walking after being dead for about four days. There are multiple layers of literary, social, and spiritual significance in this story, just as there usually are in Bible stories. Despite the claims of biblical literalists and fundamentalists, often there is more significant meaning in the background than in the words on the page that hint at the background. One background factor to know about the Gospel of John, as I've said on other occasions, not only is it the last of the Gospels that we have in our Bible to be written, it is the fact that this contains several I am statements, which we heard Kathy read uh, a couple of them. These I am statements are characteristic identifiers for Jesus. You might remember some of them. I am gate, I am door, um, there are others like that. When we remember that God in the burning bush told Moses that God's name is I am who I am, which is how we get the Hebrew name Yahweh, we get the hint that John's use of I am to describe Jesus is theologically significant. John is connecting Jesus to the identity of God. In the many variations of I am statements, John shows the universal presence and holy encompassing presence of Jesus in the spiritual and physical realms of reference. In essence, John's Jesus is everywhere in everything. John is reminding people that even though Jesus is gone, remember this was written, up to 50 years after Jesus walked the earth. Even though Jesus is gone, as the people hear these stories, they can trust that Jesus is with them. And I think so can we. The key point of our Lazarus story section today is not to be wowed by the death to life theme. That was not unique in the stories and experiences of the times. As hard as that to believe, that was not unique in stories. I think what was unique was how Jesus was identified in this story. So in this gospel passage, we can trust that Gospel of John's Jesus Come Lately is making a big point about identity rather than biology or chemistry. Jesus told her, Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me will live even if they die, and those who are alive and believe in me will never die. I offer that phrase in every memorial service or funeral that I do because I think of it as the central promise, one of the central promises, maybe the central promise of our faith heritage. Several decades after most of the other writings about Jesus, the message in this gospel is Jesus as Sonny telling Cher, I've got you, babe. John's Jesus is bridging the religious divisions with an inclusive declaration that lets Martha know not only who he is, but also motivates her to trust the message. This understanding will enable her to live through the future even through the hard days that are to come. That's the ticket to human life and storied resurrection. Trust and self-assurance infused with self-knowledge enhance the quality and confidence of the living that we are doing anyway. The message we can have in our faith is that we do not need to let difficulties and differences inhibit us. The one we call leader and comforter and creator and resurrection and life 
is ready to embrace all of us with love that really never ends. That is the latest and greatest message ever told from Jesus' mouth. And it is the answer to the deep yearnings of the author of Psalm 130, as, just, as Mike just read. The mission statement of our church, of Bloom in the Desert Ministries, written in 2005, 2004, 2005, the mission statement includes a phrase that we want to help people live Christian lives. Don't let that scare you. When that phrase was developed about 15 years ago, the people gathered at the time were very careful with their words. I was often inspired in those discussions as I witnessed how this early congregation was very caring about the statements we use to describe our church's mission, vision, and core values. It was clear that Bloom folks wanted our understanding of living a Christian life to not carry the rigidity and exclusionary forces that many of our folks gathered had experienced in their Christian journey thus far. I remember that there was hope that Bloom could be a place where people gathered and scattered would be together to experience and learn and share that Christianity is more about healing and lifting and unbinding people so our lives are freer and fuller and richer in ways that help healthy spiritual beings flourish. In these unique days of our lives, I witness online various ways that bloomers are offering themselves to help each other remain connected in community and flourish in isolation. The encouragement is heartening and of great value in our separated community life. And I trust we will keep it up for the duration. At the same time, I was blessed when I read of a different community. I read the personal family story of Lutheran Bishop Kevin Strickland uh, that he posted online recently. Bishop Strickland, is one of the gay pastors that I interviewed in 2018. At the time, he was uh, Reverend Strickland still, but he was elected bishop since and serves uh, in Atlanta uh, for Southeastern United States as an uh, Evangelical Lutheran Church of America bishop. Bishop Strickland uh, was interviewed for my dissertation, dissertation project. He's one of the interviews, and you can find that online at gaypastorwelcome.com. Now, he wrote in, in a posting, and see if you can picture this and understand the example it provides of the connection of community that we can do in our, with, with our faith inspiration in this unique time. He wrote, my family went to my grandmother's nursing home on Sunday and held up signs outside her window. They blew bubbles, they made silly faces, they brought her joy. Seeing the photos they took brought me joy beyond words. You see, this sweet one has dementia and may not have any memory of the visit the, the day after, but what incredible joy it brought to her in that moment. That is what I hold on to, he writes. That is what I hold on to in these days of living through a global pandemic. We let so many little things take over what really take over what really are the most important. We may only have the moment we have. So find joy in that one moment and live and love there. Thank you, Bishop Strickland. We may only have the moment we have, Martha, and all the rest of us. So find joy in that moment and live and love there. In our faith story, please remember that Jesus did not live and die and rise so we could feel badly about ourselves and our circumstances. 
The many stories about his defying nature and conventional thinking were meant to help all people survive and thrive in their lives at the time and in the future. Let that be the way we leave this year's unprecedented Lenten journey. We are people committed to living and thriving, and the common element we share from above is loving. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I want to say a word just uh, before Ken starts playing that the uh, hymn that we are about to sing, uh, When We Face an Unknown Future, is another hymn by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. We've sung her hymns before in times of great change in our country. She takes uh, what you know may be said to be familiar hymn tunes, it all depends on your tradition, but she takes other hymn tunes and writes new words to them that are very contemporary to the context in which we are living. So when we face when we face an unknown future is a hymn that she just wrote and released last week uh, for use in churches and other settings uh, and and we are grateful for her permission to use that today. Uh, let us uh, sing together this this uh, this special hymn. Now is a time in our service when we join our hearts in prayer. We think of our concerns, our joys, our thanksgivings. Uh, we know that in response to each of these, we can say, God, receive our prayer. As persons have done in previous weeks, we encourage you to uh, type into Facebook uh, any of the prayer requests that you have that we may follow up with you. If you would like to do that and you're watching this as the YouTube broadcast that follows, uh, you may also type that in the comments section and we will, uh, whatever is there, remembering that that is open to the public, 
uh, let us uh, know that we will take note of those and keep those in our prayers to come. Uh, in our time of prayer, uh, one of the things that we've done here in order to ensure the viability of our webcast is that we've all had to turn off our phones uh, so that I can't follow along with well to to disconnect from the from uh, from the from the Wi-Fi so I can't follow along to see what you've been posting. So you know the priesthood of all believers. Let the folks that are watching and participating in this way take a look at the prayers that are coming and. Please uh, take it upon yourself to pray for one another as we have been encouraged to do in our faith. And so we take this moment of uh, first noting our concerns and um, I know that I wanted to lift a special prayer for the people of um, Arkansas who experienced a tornado last evening. Um, I understand that several people were hurt. I've not heard of fatalities. On the other hand, that sort of thing just, you know, wreaks havoc on lives. And so in the midst of what we're already experiencing uh, with COVID-19, to have that kind of a double hit, we, we, we offer our prayers on behalf of those folks in Arkansas. Uh, let, you now, let us all now think in terms of other concerns that we have and pause for a moment of silence. And together we say, God, God receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. And I encourage you in this time to think in terms of your joys and thanksgivings as we are in our separate places and gathered here together. What is it that we can be thankful for? What is it that can be the moment of joy that we can share? Think of those. I repeat again the great joy of our congregation to connect uh, with the family of Lucille Elizabeth Kino, uh, with her mother Sarah Laura Tony, uh, her father um, Laura Kino, and her brother Cole, as well as grandparents Debbie and David Laura Tony, uh, as we are a part of this community of faith and connected in that way. Baptism is a welcoming into the community of faith uh, at any time in a person's life, and we are grateful to welcome uh, Lucy. Um, in this time. Think of other opportunities for joy and thanksgiving and I'm, I'm very thankful for the people that are here in this room uh, that are helping this service begin. Thankful for the leaders of Bloom that are working to be able to, main, to not just maintain but to provide um, enhancing aspects of our community as we are in this unique time in, in uh, the history of the world as well as the history of this church and the history of our community as as uh, friends and connected ones. So let us pause now and remember our joys and our thanksgivings. And together we say, God, God receive our prayer. prayer. We pause now for our offertory, for our opportunity for the offering of our gifts. Uh, as we have mentioned uh, before, there are opportunities online for you to be able to support Bloom and our ministries in this time. You can, by going to the Bloom website and uh, clicking on the donate button is one way. Our new way with the opportunity for texting, which there are instructions in the, uh, uh, um, uh, in the caption areas uh, for uh, this uh, this uh, Facebook Live opportunity, and we will be publishing that more broadly. As people have done, you also may mail to the office or drop something by. You will notice that today we do have a basket of the offerings of the envelopes and offerings that have come into the office this week uh, that are uh, we are providing and will be blessing in this time as we pray 
our prayer of dedication in a few more moments. So please continue to join us. I am encouraged by our denominational leadership to note that if we are a church that continues to pay all of our employees and subcontractor and contractors, as we have, um, that we are encouraged to be able to tell that to people that that's something that we have committed to doing. And so Bloom has committed to continue to do that and we are grateful for the support that is being offered in order to help us be able to do that. Let us now be in this time of receiving our offering from the many gifts that we have been given. Let us share. This is our prayer of dedication. Living God, we thank you for the privilege of giving in your exalted name. We value our ability to give in a way that honors your spirit. As we present our offerings, we remain secure in our knowledge that you will sustain us by your redeeming grace and your infinite love. May your righteous spirit always dwell in our hearts. Amen. 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 with one another as we pray together the prayer from Jesus using the language and the words that are most familiar and comfortable to us saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
our hymn of sending uh, in in your uh, among the hymns that you have online there is one that clearly was written before the days of uh, physical or social distancing um, in that it is entitled Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And so we will metaphorically connect with one another and with Jesus as we sing this hymn together. Let us enjoy this old time favorite. is ended our service begins what does god need from us simply, simply do justice love kindness and walk humbly with your god my dear friends in faith here in the room as well as you out there on the uh, through facebook live and through youtube will you continue in your lives to be the people of god in christ's name we, we will. will amen let us offer to one another physically, socially, um, what's the phrase, distanced, uh, um, um, uh, opportunities of grace and peace, and go in peace. Amen. Amen.